We have another proclamation uh, here today, which I'm proud to be a part of, along with Council Member Cole Wells. Uh, for 32 years, our nation has recognized September as Recovery Month. Recovery Month promotes the benefits of prevention, treatment, and recovery for mental and substance use disorders. It also celebrates the millions of people who have found and are finding this path to hope, heart, and personal growth. Recovery Month is also a chance to recognize and thank our service providers who work every day to support those in recovery. Some real heroes there. And so today, uh, we have uh, somebody to accept this proclamation, David Coffey, who many of you know, Executive Director of the Recovery Cafe, which does amazing work in our community and in a couple of different districts here in the uh, King County, as well as uh, Kelly Nomura, who is the Director of King County's Behavioral Health Division. This year's theme is recovery is for everyone, every person, every family, and every community. This focus reminds everyone who is in recovery and those who support them that no one is alone in their journey through recovery. Everyone's journey is different, but we are all in this together. Today, Council Member Cole Wells and I would like to recognize September 2021 as National Behavioral Health Recovery Month here in King County. And I want to start out by acknowledging that during that uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen a surge in substance use disorder and mental health problems. Anxiety and depression are even more prevalent. According to the data from the U.S. Census Bureau and the National Center for Health Statistics, as of February this year, four in 10 adults reported symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorder, a stark increase from 2019 when just one in 10 adults reported these symptoms. In addition, the CDC recently released their overdose statistics from 2020. Uh, it was shocking. Uh, sadly, overdose deaths exploded to more than 90,000 nationwide in 2020, with synthetic opioids such as fentanyl causing 60% of those overdose deaths. King County was no exception to this trend. We saw a 24% increase in drug and alcohol poison deaths last year, which pushed us to a new record high level of overdose deaths last year. And sadly, we're on track to surpass that, surpass that this year. So the numbers are tragic. They represent individuals and families who have been devastated by substance use and mental health problems. And in the face of this tragedy, it is more important than ever that we reaffirm that recovery is always possible for every single person, myself included, and that we as elected leaders are committed to continuing to work to expand access to treatment and recovery services. This is an issue, as you all know, is close to my heart. And I really appreciate the opportunity to speak and to continue to raise awareness uh, for this message of hope. In fact, yesterday, uh, excuse me, uh, Sunday, I was at the Mariners game where uh, we had a recovery day and I handed out shirts, uh, recovery for all Mariners shirts, which was a, was a great experience. So after I read the proclamation, I want to give David Coffey uh, a, a chance and Kelly Nomura as well uh, to speak. But next, we will hear from everyone's favorite King County Council member, Jeannie Cole Wells. Oh, thank you, Councilmember Dunn. I certainly don't know about that, but I do know that I appreciate your providing the opportunity for me to join with you in reading the proclamation today. And I also appreciate all of your work in this really important topic, becoming more important all the time. As we know, behavioral health is something that all of us um, are affected by. Certainly, my family and my husband's family have been. And the, the struggles, the challenges that many people and families and communities have faced in trying to achieve mental health, behavioral health. Uh, as recovery encompasses uh, overwhelmingly mental health and substance abuse challenges, uh, we know that the importance of behavioral health cannot be overstated. All of us, all of us, should have the opportunity to access services and support for our overall health and well-being. And proclamations like this one help to reaffirm our collective commitment to supporting the health and recovery of those in King County who need assistance and support. I thank you all for joining us. And as we celebrate Behavioral Health Recovery Month, 
Uh, let's just really emphasize and underline recovery. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I gotta, we have a proclamation to read, then we're gonna hear from, from David and, and, and Kelly here. Let me just, a low tech man in a high tech world here. Hold <laughs> on, I got it. Oh, there it is. Okay, Jeannie, you ready? Yes. Okay, I'll do the first one. Here is the proclamation. Whereas behavioral health is an essential part of one's overall health and wellness, and an estimated 400,000 people in King County are affected by behavioral health conditions and... Whereas preventing and overcoming mental health issues and substance abuse disorders are essential to achieving healthy lifestyles, both physically and emotionally, and... Oh, wow, we're reading two different proclamations. I think we are. I think we are. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious me. Okay, uh, these are totally different. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 we are, you know why? Guess what, everybody? I am looking at the proclamation from 2020. Jeannie, Jeannie, okay. read. Why don't, why don't I make a suggestion? Councilmember Colwell's read the proclamation. Councilmember Dunn, introduce the guests. Okay, so whereas behavioral health is essential to overall health and wellness, and whereas preventing and overcoming mental health issues and substance abuse disorders are essential to achieving healthy lifestyles, both physically and emotionally, and whereas prevention of mental health and substance use disorders works, treatment is effective and recovery is possible. And whereas recovery is a process and people here in King County and around the nation do recover, and whereas mental health and substance use disorders are common, with an estimated 450,000 people in King County affected by these conditions. And whereas we encourage relatives and friends of people with mental health and or substance use disorders to recognize the signs of a problem, implement preventive measures, and guide those in need to appropriate treatment and recovery support services. And whereas we recognize four dimensions of recovery from mental health and substance use disorders, health, home, purpose, and community. And whereas to help more people achieve and sustain recovery, the US Department of Health and Human Services, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy and King County government invite all residents of King County to participate in National Recovery Month. Now, therefore, we, the Metropolitan King County Council, proclaim the month of September 2021 as Behavioral Health Recovery Month in King County and call upon all residents to support or participate in appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies with King County's Recovery Month theme, Recovery is for Everyone, Every Person, Every Family, Every Community, dated this 14th day of September, 2021. Yay, Jeannie. And when I say I couldn't have said it better myself, <laughs> I really mean I couldn't have done that. Thank you for doing that. And. Uh, and so, as I mentioned earlier, David Coffey is the executive director of the Recovery Cafe, and uh, they do fantastic work, uh, principally with our unhoused population here. And so, David, you say a, a few words, and we're so glad to have you and so glad to be continuing to support your organization, the work you do. Thank you, Councilmember Dunn. Uh, your staff told me that 90 minutes was the max I could speak, so... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I do, thank you, Councilmember Dunn and Councilmember Colwells and the entire King County Council and Kelly and your team. Uh, it's a great privilege for me to be present for this proclamation. I have the profound gift of seeing recovery in action every day at Recovery Cafe. And the ripple effect of recovery is exponential. When someone begins on the recovery journey, it not only impacts their lives, it impacts those of their loved ones, of their children, and generations to follow. 
truly it impacts everyone they meet in their life once they're on the recovery journey. And conversely, when we lose someone to addiction or a mental health challenge, it's not just what's lost in that moment. It's all that could have been that is lost. Here at Recovery Cafe, we have several people on staff who started out as members and now they are a critical part of our operation, walking along with people every day. One of the most powerful things in the recovery movement is the person with two years helping the person with two months, helping the person with two days. And in that, also strengthening their own recovery. As you know, COVID and fentanyl uh, have dramatically increased the need for the invitation to recovery and mental health wellness. Council member Dunn addressed that very well. You know, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, it is connection. What we know at Recovery Cafe is that we all need to know and be known, to love and be loved, and feel a sense of belonging. And for anyone out there who's struggling or who has a loved one who's struggling, I want you to hear there is hope. The despair and helplessness you may be feeling can be addressed. I have the great gift of working with people every day who've been where you may be, and they are thriving today. Recovery can and does happen. In fact, it is the expected thing. In closing, I'd like to invite you all to a virtual Speak Out for Recovery event on September 28th. Kelly's team are co-sponsors, and we'll be celebrating recovery, including the joy of hearing from Council Member Dunn, who's agreed to share his own story. Again, I'm profoundly grateful to the King County Council for your commitment to the recovery movement, not only in words, but in significant investment and action. Your work is making a difference in the lives of people you'll never meet. And on behalf of our entire community, I thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks, David, we have one more. Sorry. Please go ahead. Uh, Kelly uh, Namora, who is uh, the division director for behavioral health. And, uh, and mm -hmm. Kelly, uh, are you on there? I am. Okay, great. And I just want to remind everyone uh, that they do so much great work for us. But, uh, there was a half a million dollar appropriation to deal with anti-stigmatization for individuals suffering from uh, drug and alcohol addiction and in recovery. So, Kelly, we appreciate your office's great leadership on that sort of groundbreaking uh, area of work. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. And I'm Kelly Namura. I'm the director of the Behavioral Health and Recovery Division for King County. And we oversee the mental health and substance use services as well as crisis services for low-income individuals across King County and their families. Um, I'd like to start by thanking Council Member Dunn and Cole Wells for your comments and the rest of King County Council for once again acknowledging the power of recovery to change lives. It is so important, as you've been hearing, um, that we all share that recovery is real, that there is hope, and that all people, everyone in our community is deserving of recovery. So I appreciate being able to be here today. There are so many paths to recovery as David and his team at the Recovery Cafe know so well. Um, but one thing that I know we can all share in is the belief that treatment can work and recovery can happen no matter where someone is starting out from. As Council Member Dunn spoke about the statistics and the information that we've recently learned, I'm not going to go over um, those statistics, but just really acknowledging that substance use is has increased as a result of the pandemic. And we also know that um, there's been a profound effect on all of our mental health as a result of COVID. Um, people are experiencing increases in anxiety and depression, as well as loneliness. And so we need to be available for each other to support each other and, and access services to support um, moving through these experiences. I really want to support King County in believing that recovery in all of its forms is possible with the right supports in place. King County believes that by speaking openly and helping others learn about recovery, we can end the stigma associated with mental illness and substance use. As the proclamation for Welcoming Week was just um, read, one of the lines that uh, Council Member Up the Grove said really struck with me, and it's, each of us has the power to help each other. So let's work together and support each other. <clears throat> When you can see recovery through a recovery lens, you can see that everyone has strengths and value in our community and that there is a path forward. You can see the world as a more hopeful place where things can and will change. Thanks again to the council for this proclamation. Thank you so much to everyone in the recovery community. And thanks for the opportunity to be here today. Just wonderful to hear all of the support and recognition that mental health, substance abuse treatment, um, and support is available to all. Thanks so much. Thank you uh, both, uh, Kelly and David, and uh, to my colleagues. Uh, this is always a very meaningful proclamation, and I, I'm glad that we had an opportunity 
to do it again this year, even though remotely.